Oh, uh oh. I'm doomed. The geese. Oh, shit, they have chicks. Even though I got my extendable selfie stick, this lens, like twice my arm's length away from me, and it looks like I have a camera right in my face. All right, so here's a question that has been asked on live streams a lot. In fact, it's one of those frequently asked questions, or bingo questions, or however you want to put it. Uh, at which time in history, which historical period would I want to live? And uh, here's the short answer. None. And there comes the long answer. A lot of people would expect me to want to live in the Middle Ages or something because a lot of my content is about historical arms and armor and all of that, but I'm honestly glad that I'm able to just engage in this interest and uh, look at these things and think about them at a healthy distance. By the way, everything I'm going to say, you have to take with a grain of salt. I can't provide you with specific sources for what I'm saying because it's all based on the amalgamation of what I've, what I've read over the years. I couldn't tell you, I couldn't remember exactly where I read this and that, and I, there's a chance I might be misremembering things. So again, take this with a grain of salt, do your own research. I'm just giving you my opinion based on what I know. If you actually look at the historical reality without all the romanticizing and glorifying, it kind of sucks. <laughs> especially for commoners. It's always a difference, of course, whether you're among the upper classes, and that's still the case nowadays. If you're born to a super rich family, yeah, you lucked out. And you're gonna have much, much more opportunity than somebody who's born to working class people or even in a ghetto somewhere, or who knows what, all of that. And that was even more true, perhaps, in history, because the, the social hierarchy was much more defined. So if you were a commoner, you were kind of screwed, especially when it comes to, you know, your word against that of your superiors, quote unquote. Don't get me wrong, that's still the case to an extent nowadays. You know, if a regular citizen accuses an influential politician of some wrongdoing against them, then they might not get too far, or at the very least, the uh, judicial system is rigged against them. I don't want to get too much into detail. Ooh, and this was the wrong turn. The black flies are even worse here. Screw this, got to keep moving. I mean, just imagine back then, you know, if it was your word as a commoner against that of a baron, <laughs> there's no way at all you're ever going to get a fair trial or anything resembling it. And in fact, torture was not at all out of the question as an interrogation method. Even though at certain times there was official sanction against it, but it still happened, the Greeks also considered torture a perfectly valid interrogation method. Okay, I'm sorry, but I have to switch to the crappy cell phone footage because uh, the DSLR is just not practical around here. and. I cannot do the stationary because it's May in Nova Scotia, which means you cannot stand still for half a minute without immediately being swarmed and torn apart by black flies. They will eat you right away. In fact, they continue swarming me even as I'm moving. Anyway, so one of those, those things about history, they didn't have uh, insect repellent and mosquito nets and all kinds of things. <laughs> anyway, I guess they also weren't as much of a bitch about it, but uh, I can bitch as much as I want, as my channel. Okay, so torture. From what I've read, the Greeks actually thought that, that slaves have to be tortured to get an accurate testimony. They basically thought of slaves as a category of subhuman. You have to dehumanize somebody to enslave them. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. You would have compassion. And they thought that slaves were compulsive liars, basically. And the only way you could get the truth out of them is by torturing them. So imagine being in that situation. So in the Middle Ages and other time periods, somebody might get a 
quote unquote confession out of you that um, you know lands you on the stake and there wasn't really anything you could do about it now wrongful convictions still happen and all that sometimes false confessions are forced under harsh interrogation you know even things like sleep deprivation and whatnot but it's not quite as extreme you know there's don't get me wrong there's still plenty of things wrong in the world and with the world with society but it's not quite as bad anymore it's not quite as extreme I would say you know children aren't sent into mines anymore at least in most of the world I suppose of course war was a big thing back in history and you they really did not care about injured war veterans now you know you can argue in more recent times they still didn't Vietnam veterans often ended up homeless because of PTSD and losing limbs and all of that where they are not really capable of providing for themselves anymore and they were just tossed to the wayside but again that was even worse in history amputees in ancient Greece generally ended up as beggars because there was nothing else for them if they weren't able to provide for themselves then screw you that's it it doesn't matter how bravely they fought in whichever war it was just kind of expected of them it's just yeah you you go to war whatever happens to you you know if you get if you lose a leg or an arm or more eh, whatever if you end up blind your problem nobody cares not to mention of course with due to the the state of medical practice if you even want to call it that a lot more people ended up disabled uh, because things that are perfectly treatable nowadays they wouldn't have been able to and what we would now call medical malpractice or quackery continued for a very long time I mean in in the Victorian age there was still so much crazy stuff they did and uh, especially when it comes to mental health you know they, they came up with the craziest reasons to put people in the asylum I mean there's still a lot of things that could be better by far but nowadays there's things like you can say you have anxiety or PTSD back then pff, nah. I mean there was a concept of shell shock after the First World War there were some concepts of that earlier in history but there wasn't really a great way to to address them treat them oh uh oh I'm doomed the geese oh shit they have checks they're gonna be pissy it's okay <laughs> don't mind me I'm just passing by calm down not messing with your chicks oh my goodness they are cute though don't kill me <laughs> Canada geese oh shit there they are sorry guys uh, I kind of have to I kind of have to pass you I know I don't want to mess with you I just want to pass if you could just get off the path for just a moment because it's gonna be easier for you than for me and I'm just gonna pass and I won't mess with your adorable fluffy chicks they're so cute and every time people made a new discovery there was a certain trial period during which uh, people would very likely come to harm like for example uh, shortly after radioactivity was discovered um, they thought it was a miracle cure there was for example radium chocolate and radium infused water containers that would quote unquote charge the water that you would then drink to benefit from its healing abilities um, you know like nausea vomiting various cancers um, having your jaw or your spine literally rot things like that they even came up with hold on to your seat radium suppositories 
Yeah, you heard that right. Take a radioactive substance, put it into a suppository, and shove it right up your rectum. What could go wrong, right? Miracle cure. And I know, people still come up with crazy stuff. They still do crystal healing and swallow turpentine and do all kinds of bizarre enemas and who knows what else. But at least that stuff is not approved by, you know, the health practitioner community or whatever. It's not, you know, most experts don't look at that like, yep, this is what you got to do. Get yourself some radium suppositories. You know, of course, whenever you're generalizing like that, there's always, there's always objections and exceptions and this and that and the other. But I do think that in general, overall, even though there's still plenty of problems, the quality of life has improved drastically. And people's rights and freedoms have also increased generally. I'm not trying to make light of anything bad that's happening to anyone right now. But what I'm saying is, in the big picture, if you look at you know, how people lived and thrived or didn't over time, yeah, I would say it was definitely remarkably worse for most of history, well, really all of history pretty much. So if I had to pick a time in history, uh, I don't know. I mean, there are times that I find interesting, don't get me wrong. Like the Bronze Age is quite interesting. Uh, Mycenae in particular, quite interesting, for example, as well as many others. You know, ancient Egypt. There's a lot of interesting stuff, no doubt about it. Would I want to actually live there? Not really. Because here, here's the other thing. The further you go and the more knowledge people have, the, the more options you have. Like, for example, if you don't like the way people are interconnected right now in this world, which in my opinion is generally a good thing, because you can talk to people on the other side of the world that you would otherwise never be able to, that you would never even have heard of, no problem. And you have so much knowledge at your fingertips. You can educate yourself on a large variety of topics at home. That, that's unheard of in history. I mean, yeah, you could have been sitting in a Victorian study with all the pretty bookshelves and go through some really pretty tomes, which has its own appeal, but it's so limited compared to what we have now. But things, even if you don't like that, if you're t totally opposed to that, in which case, why on earth are you even on the internet listening to me, right? <laughs> but even if you hate all that, you can go live out in the woods. Like, buy a little piece of land in the woods and build your own log cabin, and you can live however you want. In fact, there are communities of people that basically took reenactment and took it, you know, stepped it up a notch, so to speak, and who actually live in reconstructed historical villages and have a lot of fun with that. It's an option, you know, back then, you, you didn't have all the extra options that we do now because they couldn't time travel into the future. We can't time travel into the past either, but we can at least reconstruct it. And things are generally safer. There are other problems that didn't exist or didn't exist as much. You know, certain diseases of modern civilization like obesity and, you know, sitting too much, things like that. Some of that they had in history, like in Tudor times, when they suddenly had sugar from the colonies and went crazy with it and suddenly started consuming obscene amounts of sugar without knowing about the, you know, the dangers, about the risk involved. So their, their teeth got completely messed up and, you know, they, they, in some cases they literally died from tooth infections. So again, I'm not trying to glorify the present and say everything is better than history and history was just an absolute nightmare all throughout. No, of course not. But overall, in terms of the things you can do and, and quality of life and everything, I think we're generally better off. Just think about, okay, <laughs> travel may be a bit of a, a painful example right now because that's rather limited in these times. But generally like being able to get into a plane and fly to the the opposite end of the planet within a reasonable time frame that would have been completely out of the question of course people did travel a lot 
it's sometimes underestimated how much they traveled in fact but it was just a much a much bigger endeavor and much more dangerous because on the way you could run into highwaymen outlaws etc who would just take everything you have and maybe even kill you anyway again i don't want to exaggerate the dangers but you can definitely tell by the way people thought about life that they were well aware of how fleeting life is and how many dangers there are you know the whole memento mori and uh, you know carpe diem of course as well seize the day because you might not have a tomorrow stuff like that and people were just very well aware of the presence of death you know you could easily die at the age of 30 or, or even in your 20s or earlier and the the life expectancy even if you take into account that general life expectancy uh, statistics from burials are skewed by the extremely high infant mortality even if you take that into account yeah they a lot of people didn't necessarily grow that old and there was much more violence in general now there wasn't as much paranoia about it because you didn't have media just thriving on portraying this horrendous image of so much bad happens in the world and you must know it all you must look at this look at what happened look at how this person was beaten up or horribly murdered or whatever everybody is after you look click if you look at the actual statistics it's really not that bad if you compare it to earlier times even if you compare it to earlier decades you know 80s 70s 60s etc if i was forced to pick an earlier time than when i was born i might just cheat and say okay fine put me like two decades earlier make me a boomer so so that housing is more affordable um stuff like that i have a certain nostalgia for the 90s not gonna lie uh, and then 80s to an extent but I, I do recognize that that is largely because I was a kid at the time and didn't have the worries that you have as an adult. So I was a lot more detached from the problems of the world. And yeah, it's, it, was an, it was a simpler time for me, <laughs> you know. But other than that, yeah, as, as interesting as history is, I said I'd rather just look at it from a distance so to speak without having to live it with no escape you know what I mean because generally you're kind of stuck I mean it's not that social upward mobility didn't exist at all and it's not like it's fantastic nowadays but definitely better because if you were born a surf in the Middle Ages for example chances are you would die a surf there were limited opportunities for upward mobility but this whole idea that you could be a <laughs> that you could be knighted as a peasant for some heroic deed that is that's is romanticization that wasn't really realistic if we have any kind of longing for history i think we should enjoy that because that's a product of our time you know the way we look at history the way we interact with what we know about it is is a lot more fun than actually living it at least in my opinion and i think we should just enjoy that the fact that we can you know we can play games set in whatever time period or in a fantasy world or all of that we can immerse ourselves in you know imaginations of other places and other times and being somebody else and all that in, in more tangible ways People always told stories, of course, but I think there's a little bit more depth to it, I guess, however you want to look at it. Man, everything is wet here. Anyway, so this was super long and rambly, but uh, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Let me know what you think. Uh, feel free, by all means, to disagree and tell me how I idealize the present and whatever. It's all, this is just opinion, you know? This is not a, what on earth is swimming there? Anyway, this is not a scientific dissertation. This is my opinion. And uh, yeah, feel free to correct anything. You know, that I might have got, gotten wrong. That I might have misremembered from what I read about the Middle Ages and all the time periods, etc. So yeah, thanks for watching.
and have a good one, folks.